So um, thanks for having me here today. My name is Yun Ting Bao. I'm currently the first year um, the first year resident in med um, major in internal medicine at the University of Medicine and Pharmacy in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, so today I'm going to start with a case um, that a 69 years old male who is frequently hospitalized uh, due to CBD exacerbation. Sixty-nine years old male um, who frequently hospitalized due to CBD exacerbation. As you can see here, um, the number of hospitalization uh, increased um, two times from uh, four to eight events per year since the uh, 2017 to 2019, and specifically, there are two hosp hospitalization event um, per month from January to April um, in, in, just 29, in just 2019, which is a huge problem for, for the patient. A little bit about his medical history. He's an ex-smoker. Oh, have the noticeably history of non-adherent to the therapeutic regimen, including the overdosing, um, also the um, the alteration of schedules. The patient also have the improper inhal inhalation inhaling technique. Um, he had been treated with the Mikadis, uh, insulin, Berduo, and Symbicot. And at the first time we see the patient. Um, the COPD assessment revealed a CAT score of 35 points. And you can see that with the emphasis on the coughing, sputum production, and the exertion-induced dyspnea. So um, we tried to figure out which factors that could lead to the frequently exacerbation and also the polysymptomatic control. And, um, so eventually, besides his uh, not adherent to the therapy, um, he had been treated improperly, obviously. Um, we also find that uh, the, the, the patient have the, uh, the physical examination came up with the class three on malamity classification. And um, also he has the condition which is known as the retrop Nathia, which is the your cranial facial structure, we compress your airway. And the stop band score of five points, a little bit about the stop band score, um, is the comprised of eight criterions. And the higher you get, which is more than three points, the higher prob probability that the patient may develop the OSA. And this, pa this patient has five points, including um, his age and gender. Um, he snore loudly during his sleep. Um, also, the, um, he has the neck circumference approximately 43 centimeters. And, um, and his common mobility, which is hypertension. Also, the patient reported that he, feel, he always feel uh, fatigued and sleepy during his awake time. Um, but after closer inspection, um, we found out that this event occur more likely to occur when the patient is on his exertion. And also the Edward uh, sleepiness scale, which is intended to measure uh, his sleepiness time, and it's just five points. So we decided to count this out of the general assessment, which is the stop and score. So all of these clues um, raise a concern about does the patient have the OSA? So we decided to uh, perform spirometry to assess the severity of his airflow uh, limitation and the ventilator polygraphic studies for the making diagnosis of the OSA. So um, the workup later uh, help us first, uh, help us to rule out the heart failure. As you can see, the echocardiography show no sign of poor movement abnormalities, and um, hit LV extraction, which is really good, of uh, 70%, and the nt B is under diagnostic uh, threshold. A little bit of uh, notice here, you can see that the patient have the eosinophil um, 750, which is really high, and may indicate the patient have the ACOS, and also indicate that um, the, the role of steroid in his baseline treatment. 
the spirometry um, um, later confirmed the exuberity with um, the moderate to severe um, obstruction, no bronchodilator response. And the ventilator polygraphic, a little bit about the ventilator polygraphic, you really want to focus on the apnea hypopnea index, uh, which is known as the AHI for short. Um, and also the oxygen desaturation overall, because this index uh, represent the um, the event of apnea per hour of sleep. And so um, so the criteria for you to have the apnea during your sleep, which is uh, this event must last for maybe for at least 10 seconds, and it must be associated with the uh, um, oxygen desaturation. So um, uh, this test um, revealed the severe OSA, which have the AHI uh, 29 points. And if you look closer, you can see that the patient is more likely to develop OSA when he tends to sleep on his right side. And this event occurs less frequently if the patient sleeps on his left. Also, the test you uh, um, information about the mild oxygen saturation, which is um, nearly 92 percent on average, and also the female, the phenol, uh, which is 53.8, uh, confirmed the, the the role of steroid on the baseline treatment. We also take an advantage of the um, ventilator polygraphic to measure manually the pressure calibration because these index will help you to um, create a proper setting that will help you to cancel out the obstructive event during his sleep using the um, non-invasive inhalation. So the, um, the IPRP, the minimum that will be sick, the maximum is 25, and then and the uh, EPAP on average is 8 millimeter of mercury. So with all of the results, we come up with the diagnosis that the CBD class D low 2 um, with the severe OSA come along with hypertension, there's just mild depression or may anxiety as you wish, um, and diabetes type 2, and maybe I, I cause So we, uh, we treat the patient with Zola for his psychologic symptoms. Um, the triple therapy, including Otibro and Flacetide for his CBD, and initiating the non-invasive inhalation um, based on the result that we have um, from the ma from, from me measure manually the pressure calibration for his OSA. Also, we spend time listening to his concern because the patient just a little bit uh, lose uh, his confidence um, on the doctors. And also, we, um, we create the daily section of counseling, explaining the necessity and the benefits of the, ther of the adherence to the therapy. Also, the daily follow-up supervision on his inhaling technique to make sure that he used um, the Otipro in the right way. And the checkup later, after one, two weeks, and the one, two months, uh, showed this Im significant improve of the AHI. Is there, you can see that this the steadily uh, decrease from 29 to 2.5, which is really good. And he feels uh, less sleepy during his awake time, although his exertion capacity remained almost the same, which in turn requiring the oxygen supplement um, for his daily activity. So you can see here, um, the patient is on cannula for his oxygen supplement um, in his follow-up in the hospital. And the CRT um, show that uh, there's a decrease in CRT score, which is 35 points to 28, and which um, dramatically changes in the coughing and sputum production here. But you can see that the um, that um, the his exertional capacity remain almost the same as I mentioned above. 
also um, there is no, there is no hospitalization seen uh, the seen the apple that has been noticed then. So the combination of the CBD and OSA, which is known as the overlap syndrome, it have an incident between uh, ranging from uh, 2.9 to 65.9 percent, and 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 um, so if the patient have this syndrome in they will have the substantially greater risk uh, of morbidity, but also mortality. So this population with this syndrome, they will, uh, um, uh, the population with this syndrome, they will have um, more likely the chance that uh, the greater risk to develop the cardiac disease, such as uh, especially pulmonary hypertension and cardiac arrhythmia. So, um, if you uh, when evaluating the patient with CBD, um, the high index of suspicion the patient will have the OSA. I suggest we use the sub stop band scar to classify them, and um, and the, 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 and we should um, for it's crucial. The stop band scar is crucial for you to classify, but also guide your clinical decision for making the diagnosis of the OSA via uh, ventilator polygraphic or polysomnogram. And optimizing the treatment uh, for both the CBD with the bronchodilator and the OSA, which is currently the CP CPAP with the oxygen as needed in a treatment of choice nowadays. Um, but there are still numbers of questions remain unanswered. So the, given that the, the, the OSA patient, they tend to uh, uh, symptomatic. So which CBD patient without OSA symptoms should undergo the uh, diagnostic test, but also the how the OSA and CBD interact with each other to increase their mobility, but also mortality. Thank you for your listening.